Welcome to Sitam Church Online. This is Karita Mbagara, the Deputy Bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries. I want to continue with what we have been saying in the last two videos about revival, and uh, we are deriving our lessons from Psalms 85. In the first video, we talked about being captured by the Word of God, having past memories of what God has done, and what God is able to do, and that will drive our prayer for revival. And in the second video, we talked about the present, which is the place of prayer, and the kind of prayer that we should pray. A united prayer, a prayer that is coming from heart that is clean. We talked about praying because God is the one who drives revival, or true revival actually comes from God. Anything else is fake. And we also said that we must be reflective so that we ensure we are hearing what God is saying and we are doing what he is telling us. Uh, the will of God becomes part and parcel of what we are doing. And today I want to talk about the future in the sense of revival, where hope, as we pray for revival, there is a hope that we should have. And we find that in Psalms 85, from verse 10 to verse 13. Uh, let's read that passage. It says, Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. What I find here, first and foremost, is faith. Faith because as we have been praying, like we talked about in the earlier video, we are believing God will answer. And so we can start anticipating what will happen in the future. And the psalmist here is saying, that righteousness and faithfulness will walk together. They will embrace each other. Where faithfulness is consistency on our part, a right living will become what is the result of our faith. So there is the issue of believing that God will answer our prayer. We may not be seeing it now, but we start professing it by faith consistent with what Jesus told us, that when you ask for something, believe that you have it and start even giving thanks because God will grant it. But also, we find that here there is a unity that is talked about, uh, a unity between heaven and earth because we are told that faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. That is in verse 11. So there is us doing what has been revealed from heaven. And that is what revival is all about. Us walking according to the plan and the desire of God. And what we find is that there is concordance between what is in the heavens and what is on earth. There is harmony. It is not discord that is perpetuated. There is oneness between what is heavenly and what is earth. And that's what revival is about. But the psalmist goes on to say that there are resorts that we should look to. And he tells us that uh, in verse 12, Yes, the Lord will give what is good. Brothers and sisters, you see we live in a world and in this world we don't always get what is good. But God is willing to give us good when there is harmony between us and heaven. And the Bible also testifies in the book of James, chapter 1, I believe, verse 17, that every good and perfect, uh, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And God delights in doing what is good for his children. And that's what the psalmist here is saying, that we will get what is good because God is the only one who knows how to give good 
and perfect gifts. That is when we are living right. But he doesn't end there. He says, and our land will yield its increase. It will give us the fruit. It will, there, will be, uh, there will be results of our labor. What we put in will be rewarded. And God is looking to us, walking with him. And he will revive not just us, but also our work. So that there is abundance. There is increase. The mentality of scarcity will never find root in our lives because God is ensuring that what we are involved in is bringing results. This is the kind of revival I want. This is the kind of re revival I want to recommend. Not the kind that raises our emotions and really there is nothing to show for it at the end of the day. But it doesn't end there. It says righteousness, that is verse 13, will go before him and make his footsteps away. What I hear is that at the end of it, the glory, the honor, the praise, the adoration will be God's. It is not us. You see, whether we are prophets or apostles or evangelists or teachers or whatever, miracle workers, whatever we have been given by God so that revival can happen, we are given as stewards. In the final analysis, it is God who is at work and he's the one who will lead the procession. He's the one that is to be honored. He's the one at the head of the table. He's the one who is seated on the throne. He is the one that is to be glorified. And this is what we want. In summary, this psalm is telling us, let us be captured by the nature, the character of God. Then because of that, uh, you know, uh, rapture of who God is, let's go before him in prayer. And when we pray, we can start anticipating a revival, the kind of revival that will end up in glorifying God. But it is not just God who is glorified, we ourselves are beneficiaries because good is coming our way and we are receiving a reward out of what our labors or out of our labors. What a revival that would be. Is that what you've been praying for? Did you pray for revival with that in mind? If you have not been praying in that way, I want to encourage you. Reread this psalm again, uh, review what we have said, and start praying that way. And I believe that God will give us a good uh, resort uh, and we will enjoy ourselves living in the presence of God. We will be in the place where Edom, uh, Obed or Edom was when the tabernacle of God dwelt in his house. And within a short time, actually three months, everybody could see that he was a blessed man. I want the presence of God to come into my life, into my family, into my church, into my country. That's what I'm praying for. Because when that happens, we will all be rejoicing. If this has been a blessing to you, share it, subscribe, because we will be putting out other videos, maybe on related or different issues, but they will be a blessing. Uh, and let your friends also be blessed when you share so that they, together with us, can uh, start praying aright and not praying amiss uh, uh, so that our prayers will be heard and granted. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you.